Here we are, folks, ready for some drawing. It's another week to enjoy a little bit of creativity together for two days in a row, Wednesday and Thursday, right here at Behance. So I'm really glad you're here. Adobe Live is a great place to hang out if you just need a little inspiration and it's time to put all the other worries and thoughts aside and just focus on creativity, right? And this show is the place to do some easy, simple, relaxing drawing together. We spend the first 10 minutes or so just doing a You Draw It, which is where you draw along with me. And then we follow that up with something in the middle. It's always different, a little bit of art education sometimes, sometimes a doodle game. Today, we're going to look at, again, one of my favorite books from that very, very nice bookshelf in the back where I've collected books for the past 30 years, uh, all mostly having to do with art or drawing or things like that. Many wonderful picture books there as well. Anyway, I hope you're all doing very well today. And I see that we have folks joining us in the chat. Very nice to see you all. Um, I hope you're also treating yourself uh, these days because what a weird time we're living through, right? Sometimes you need a little bit of a treat. I myself uh, can't eat regular ice cream, you know, really upsets my tummy. But I have found a delicious dairy-free ice cream that I eat pretty much every night. And I'm going to probably pack on some LBs, but who cares, right? Um, and you know, when I was a kid, I used to think that Neapolitan ice cream, which is when you buy the tub that has the chocolate, the vanilla, and the strawberry, I thought that was called Napoleon ice cream. Yeah, so I was wrong about that. I didn't learn it too much later in life. Um, which reminds me, I always was wondering, do you know where Napoleon kept his armies? In his sleeveys. Well, Time to do some drawing. Why don't we do it, folks? Okie dokie. Now grab yourselves a pencil, a pen, a marker, a crayon, or just some kind of a rod out of, um, you know, one of your parents' favorite uh, instruments, you know? And, um, you know, just break it in half and uh, dip it in a little bit of honey and draw all over the walls. That's always the best place to draw anyway, isn't it? Uh, don't tell them I said that, though. Now, to do these drawings, it's very simple. You do need something to draw with, a piece of paper as well. Um, you can also draw digitally if you like. I'm drawing in Photoshop, but that's not important. You can draw anywhere you like. You could draw in Adobe Fresco on the iPad if you have an iPad. Um, but you have to be able to do three simple things, one of which is a straight line. If you can draw a straight line, you're in good shape. Everybody says, I can't draw a straight line. Gang, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It could be a little wobbly, right? Who cares? No pressure. Not in this little drawing world that we live in, okay? Also, zigzags. You gotta be able to draw a zigzag. Sometimes they get ganged up like that, you know? Sometimes they're long and short like that. Whatever. That's a zigzag, okay? Last but not least, curvilinear. Okay, could be an S curve, could be a C curve, could go that way, could go this way. That is all you need to do to be able to do these drawings together. We start with the you draw it, so we're gonna draw this. Now I draw a little line, you follow along with me, all right? Quick hello to some folks in the chat. We have Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth. We have uh, J. Mark Bowden. Nice to see you. And Clever and Sam and Mallory and Paula and Joe and Sigrid. People from all over the world. Nice to see you all. Thank you for joining us. Very nice to see you. And uh, why don't we get cooking right now? It's time to draw. So first thing you want to do is a line straight across like so. Okay. Actually, I'm going to use my you draw it color. I'll make that red. Watch this, it's gonna be magic. Wow, how'd I do that? Crazy. All right, straight across. That's the first step. Next thing we're gonna do, zoom in a little bit so you can see this, is I'm gonna come up with a tiny bit of a curve like that and just off the edge, okay? See that, just off the edge. And then some symmetry. We'll do it over on this side too, okay? And that is how we're gonna kick off this drawing. And now, folks, I'm going to connect this area to this area, but I'm going to do it with a slight curve. Watch. Slight curve like that. Very slight. That's what you call a shallow C curve. Okay. Now, next step. Another bump. A little bump up like that. And we'll do some symmetry on that side. And again, we'll connect with a slightly shallow C curve. I mean, it's ever so slight. Ever so slight. Okay, and that is the beginning of our drawing. Next, I'm gonna show you a trick, okay? Now, we're gonna start right here in the middle of this very first line we drew. Find the center point of that line. And we're gonna drop a line straight on down. Now, how far? Well, I'll show you, we're gonna do this in stages. I want you to see, 
the length of this first line we drew. And I want you to imagine that you're drawing a line about the same length down this way. Okay, so I make a little mark like that. See, I can just give myself a little dot, something to aim for. All right, and then I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna look at that distance and double it. Okay, we're gonna double it. Make another mark right about there. Does this have to be absolutely perfect? No, that's the good news. Never does, okay? It just has to be close, close to this. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect all these. Now, sometimes if you're drawing a straight line down, you might wanna stop for a moment, just pause, lift up your pencil, right? You can go like this, you can draw a line down, you can stop for a moment, just get your bearings, and then continue, and now you're in good shape. Look at that. All right, or you could do it all in one shot, does not matter, not at all. All right, now here's the trick I wanna show you as well for getting our next bit, because we're gonna try and do this. We're gonna try and curve down and finish all with a nice big curve to here. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna travel about halfway down here, and then I'm gonna travel another halfway like that and come out maybe a little less than half, but let me show you, okay? About like so, right about there. Right, that's kind of what I want to aim for there. All right, maybe even a little wider than that, maybe about like there. Boop. See how that's less than, or farther than halfway down, okay? Farther than halfway down this line. And I want to curve to there, and then I want to give myself another little guide. This is always a helpful thing to do. I'm going to put a little dot right there. So I've got one, two, three steps to get to where I need to go. So I curve, pause, curve, pause, and curve and finish. See that? That's how I can make a really nice smooth curve by giving myself a couple of little marks to hit. Okay, so I wanna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna go there, yep, right? And then about there. So this is a good way to do it. Curve, curve, curve. Okay, if they're not perfectly symmetrical, do not worry, not a big deal. Or you can always erase and redraw, but really it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it, don't sweat it, okay? Now the next step, we are gonna do a nice little line out this way and then give it a little curve and out this way and we give it a little curve like that. Okay, and by now you might have a good idea of what it is we're drawing, hmm. Okay, now we come over to this side here, and we're gonna do a C curve and then a bump, watch. C curve, bump, okay. Same thing, only this time I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna go C curve out and that. Look how far down, I go one, two, give about the same amount of distance here, from here to here, double that, down, and bump. Mm-hmm. And one more time, this time I'm gonna give myself a little more space, and this one's gonna come down this way, and then bump, watch. Down a little longer, and bump, okay? Down, bump. And you wanna do the same thing on the other side, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? You come out, C, curve, bump, right? Come over here, we do C, curve, bump. And then one more, we go down, and a bump like that. Ha, huh, this looks familiar. All righty, now, up here at the top, anybody know what this is? Let's see. Destroyer of aphids, says Clever. Gosh, you know, I don't know what the ladybug eats, but I have heard it is a very good um, destroyer of certain garden pests, so maybe that's what you're referring to there. Clever, could be, could be. All right, now, how do we do the pattern on the back of a ladybug? Let me show you. First step, you're just gonna come from this top bit down here. We're gonna come down a little ways like that. Do the same thing on this side, down a little ways. And then you just come right across like that and like that. Okay, down and down. It's like two L's mirroring one another, okay, on their sides. And I just scoop down this way and I give it another scoop on that way, okay? That is the beginning. Then we come down around this area and look how big this is. It's an oval. I'm just gonna make it like that. So it's kind of here. Now don't draw this part, but watch. It's tilted on an angle like that. See that? It's an oval that's kind of tilted. 
I'm gonna come on this side and do kind of the same thing, only I reverse it now, so it's kind of angled that way. Alrighty. Then over here, watch this, just a little bump there and a little bump there. Symmetry all the way across, right? Now between these two legs, watch, or around this one rather, another little bump there and another little bump there, okay? And that is it. There is the ladybug pattern we need on the back. Now up here at the top by the head, you just do a tiny little circle like that and a tiny little circle like that, right? When I say circle, I should say half circle, pardon me. Now here comes the fun part, coloring stuff in, right? So all you do is you just color all this in, right? And you see what happens? Those eyes get really nice and small. Little dots up there, okay? And here, we're gonna leave a little mark here and a little mark there because they have these little white dots over there. And then we color this bit here, like so. And then we color this bit here, right? Like so. If you want to be really fancy, you can like erase just a little mark like that. But not important, don't have to do that. And we just color in the rest of these dots. And guess what, gang? We have ourselves a pretty nice ladybug. How about that? How about that? Now what do you want to do with this ladybug? That's the question. Remember, you can customize these drawings, right? Well, let's see, you know, we could, we could have a little stem here and maybe our ladybug's hanging out on a leaf. That's an idea, right? Could be a little leaf there. Maybe that's the uh, way we want to make this happen. Right, that's one idea. But you could have it crawling on anything, little windowsill, little tree. Um, up to you. You know, how do you want to customize this drawing and make it your own? Sky's the limit. Your imagination. Use it. It's a wonderful thing. That is the You Draw It section of our uh, show today. Hope you enjoyed that. And hope your ladybugs turned out lovely. Um, You know what? It's time for me now to share with you a favorite book of mine. I have so many books on this bookshelf. Boy, they're all over the place. And today, I wanted to share with you this book, Welcome to Mamoko. Zoom that in there so you can see that. Welcome to Mamoko. Now, every time I share a book with you, I, I want to tell you what it is that I love about the book. What I love about this book is it's the only book I've ever seen like this where what you have on the inside cover is you have a cast of characters who appear on every spread of the book on all of the two page spreads that are in the book and what you're supposed to do is you keep track of a single character and their day okay from morning until the nighttime where this little carnival and each of them has a different story happening Okay, with no words. So let's say that you were to choose the lion, all right? And um, you can follow the lion then. First you find your character on a spread. And let's see where the lion is. Here he is, okay? And then for every spread, you find that character and see how he's going with his day. And you go all the way through to the end where there's this really neat carnival scene. And um, everything is... Really fun to look at. These are just adorable drawings, full of detail, full of color. But essentially what you have are, let's see, um, one, two, three, uh, about a dozen or more different stories in this one book. And in addition to that, they hide a bunch of other things for you to find, okay? They have some hide and seek action, objects to find, such as a pencil and a piece of cheese and a skateboard. And then you have to count and find all of the apples that are lost throughout the book. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. Now, I don't know how to pronounce uh, the names of the authors of this book. Um, so, shame on me. Uh, but here's the book. Welcome to Mamoko. Alexandra Mizelinska and Daniel Mizelinska. That's my guess. Um, Mizelinski, pardon me. 
Uh, so I hope I'm getting that close to right. I don't know for sure. Uh, but there you have it. Welcome to Momoko, one of my favorites, and I love sharing these cool books with you. And if you if you are interested in growing your book collection, if you have the means, and um, that's something that you are interested in, I try and show some of the more unusual, more special books that are especially good when it comes to um, having inspiring illustrations to look at, right? Because this is a drawing show, so I like to share books that have great drawings in them. Okay, there you go. Alrighty, so that was favorite books. And um, if any of you out there actually have that book, let me know in the chat and see. Um, Sam says, man, Kyle always shows books I would have loved as a kid. Gosh, you know what? I wish I did have these books as a kid. Um, I have to tell you the books they're making today, there are so many great books and uh, my kids are, are spoiled, I have to say, because their their father, me, I like to buy these books. Um, it's for them, but really, honestly, I love them just as much. Now it is time for the animal and activity. Now, friends, if you've been here before, you know what this means. This is where you will suggest to me an animal doing something funny, strange, weird, unexpected, and I will draw that animal in the remaining time that we have, which is always, you know, kind of tight. It's not a lot of time, and I try and get something good done right before the end of the show. Um, and you can do anything you like, something totally bizarre, totally weird. There are, of course, gonna be some limitations for me. There are some animals I don't quite know how to draw, but I try my best. And I look for your suggestions in the chat and then we just go for it, right? No safety net. So why don't I grab my light blue for making my sketch. I always like to use a light blue color. And uh, I got some, plenty of space here, big wide open canvas on which to draw. And I will look in the chat for your suggestions. An animal doing something unexpected, something weird, something funny. And let's see what we can make. We have a piranha flossing. That's pretty funny, clever, I like that. A piranha flossing. A spider with a top hat. I like that too. Interesting that we picked another, uh, um, well, an arachnid, not really an insect. I should be careful with my phrasing. A dancing seal, says Joe. Well, that's fun too. I'm trying to think if I've ever drawn a seal on this show. I, I could have sworn I tried once, maybe. Do you know there've been almost 70 episodes of this show already, or maybe more? Remember, gang, they're all archived on YouTube. If you just search Draw Along with Kyle, you can go on there and find them all. Um, all right, a monkey wearing boxing gloves, a boxing monkey. That's fun, I like that too. That was from Reynold. Good idea. Um, well, let's see, a shark skateboarding. I know sharks could do that. A squirrel doing archery, says Jane. That's a fun one too. Ah, uh, boy. Clever, you've had quite a few suggestions in the past, and I don't remember if I've ever drawn one from you or not. Um, the piranha flossing is pretty funny, I have to say. Um, these are all great, gang. These are all great. I think, I think, oh, here's another one from Janet. A giraffe drawing a sketch of an elephant. <laughs> That's pretty complex, but I like it. All right, here we go. I'm going to try this, this flossing piranha because it's just a strange one, and I, I just think it's interesting and funny. Now, I don't know exactly what a piranha looks like, um, but I will do my best to get the shape right here. I'm gonna have him kinda using his fins for the flossing here. So we got a, one little fin there. Uh, da -da -da -da. And then we're gonna have that little tail back this way. Open that mouth. Tons and tons and tons of those sharp little nasty teeth. When I was a kid, I was terrified of piranhas because of how they were shown in films and movies. They always made them out to be just the scariest of all fish, you know? Um, and honestly, I don't know if they're as, as bad as their reputation, but uh, I'm still pretty scared of them, I have to say. Pretty scared. So we're gonna have that little piece of floss going this way and then that way. And that's gonna be our flossing piranha.
Don't they have like fins kind of like that? I don't know. I'm just I'm just guessing, gang. I'm doing my best here. I like that. That's funny. Let me put I'm gonna put this body pull it back this way just a hair and make that tail just a little bigger. I think that's just more fun. Better for the composition. Right? Can't forget these things. Get that fin down there and make room for the uh, the bottom of the head and the gills kind of shape like that. And uh, there he is. He's flossing. Check it out. You know, dental hygiene. It's important even for a piranha. Kind of do like that for the eye. All right, now. Let us grab a darker color here, and we'll knock this back like we always do. Pop right up on top here, and let's see what we can do in about four minutes. We're gonna come over, give it a bump there, come down, and then come around this way. Woo! Sharp teeth, terrifying, scary piranha teeth. You know, when you're drawing stuff, remember you're you're drawing something that's three-dimensional, right? So I'm thinking, okay, that mouth is open and this is like, you know, an, an oval and an oval, right? That's how I'm thinking about that mouth and then trying to wrap the teeth around in that shape to give that illusion of three, dim of three dimensions, right? Think about stuff like that when you're drawing, okay? And that will make a big difference in your drawings, I can tell you. Let's do a little shape like that. I think I want to erase out a little highlight there. That'll look kind of cool. Maybe just make it a giant dark iris. It's kind of scarier. Ugh. Dangerous animal. Okay, but it's it's in packs, right? They're they don't they kind of attack in um, in really large numbers? Isn't that the whole thing about piranha? So we're gonna come back from this tooth. There's one little bit of floss there. We're gonna come up this way. Actually, I don't want to do the same shape. That's better. And then we're gonna do a little bump here, come around, come on down and back, and then nice big tail. And then we're gonna come out this way. And I think that's, you know, I honestly have no idea what their fins look like and all that jazz, uh, but we get the idea. We know it's a fish with sharp teeth. We know it's flossing. So I guess that's kind of good enough to make it work, right gang? Says me anyway. It's my show. So. Yikes. Okay, I like that. Now, let's give a little detail here. The ocean floor. Some little sea plants here. Underwater, right? Get the idea that we're under the water. Put a few bubbles in there. Like that, let's hide our sketch. Put a few more scales in, and I think we can call that one pretty much done. So another fun suggestion, great idea. Thank you for that. All of your suggestions as usual. 
Lots of fun, gang. So I appreciate it. I appreciate your creativity. Okay. Well, that was a good day. Drew a little ladybug. We drew a flossing piranha. You know. Good stuff. Okay, well, hey. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, thanks to you, thank you for hanging out with me and for doing a little bit of drawing. I always appreciate it when you take a little time out of your day to spend it with me, so thank you so much. And I want to ask you all, please, to remember to take care of yourselves and each other. And above all, as always, please be kind. And um, I will see you all tomorrow at the same time for some more drawing. Until then, ciao for now.